Today is the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. This morning, the Secretary General spoke in an event here at headquarters to mark the day. He said that every woman and every girl has the right to a life free of violence, yet this right is violated every day for millions of women. He pointed to the recent emergence of reports detailing sexual harassment in the workplace from many organizations and institutions worldwide as evidence of how pervasive sexual violence against women is. Violence against women is fundamentally about power, he said, and will only end with gender equality and the full empowerment of women. He added that the UN is committed to addressing violence against women in all its forms and called on the international community to further its collective action to end violence against women and girls for good. His remarks are available online. And uh, just after I'm done, uh, in a short while, uh, I'll be joined by Pramila Patton, the UN Special Representative on Sexual Violence in Conflict. Uh, and she'll be here to talk to you about her recent trip to Bangladesh, including Dhaka and Cox's Bazaar. I have a trip to announce. The Secretary General will travel to Cote d'Ivoire to attend the 5th African Union European U Union Summit in Abidjan on the 29th of November. The theme of the summit is investing in the youth for a sustainable future. The Secretary General will deliver remarks for the during the opening ceremony. He will also meet with President Alassane Ouattara, as well as other participating heads of state and government. We expect the Secretary General back in the office on the afternoon of the 30th of November. The Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, is in Brussels, Belgium today on a two-day visit. He's meeting with senior government officials as well as officials from the European Union and the African Union and key stakeholders. He will discuss ways to further strengthen the partnership with the European Union and the UN-AU-EU triangular cooperation, including at a Euro European Parliament high-level conference that focuses on a renewed partnership with Africa. Mr. Lacroix will also co-chair the UN-EU Steering Committee on Crisis Management tomorrow. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia today convicted Ratko Mladic on charges of genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes and sentenced him to life imprisonment. Serge Bramertz, the prosecutor for the tribunal, said that today's judgment is a milestone in the tribunal's history and international criminal justice. He noted that Ratko Mladic was one of the first persons indicted by his office and the last to be convicted. Mr. Bramert said that this judgment vindicates the Security Council's vision 24 years ago to secure peace through justice by holding accountable the most senior leaders responsible for the crimes. His full statement is online, as is one from Adama Jeng, the special advisor on the prevention of genocide. Jan Kubish, the Secretary General's special representative for Iraq, briefed the Security Council this morning and congratulated Iraq's government and people on their historic victory against Daesh and its so-called caliphate, which he called a victory on behalf of the world community. Regarding the situation in the Kurdistan region, Mr. Kubish said that all outstanding issues between the federal government and the Kurdistan regional government needs to be resolved through their constructive partnership dialogue, leading to sustainable solutions on the basis of the Constitution that will also guarantee the full constitutional rights of the Kurdistan region of Iraq and its people. He also provided an update on the UN's humanitarian work in Iraq, noting that humanitarian partners have reached more than 6 million Iraqis during this year, including 2 million affected by military operations in Mosul. Each month, he said, we're reaching nearly 1 million civilians with the assistance they need to survive. Stefan de Mistura, the special envoy for Syria, spoke to reporters as he attended the conference taking place in Riyadh, and he expressed his belief that the meeting will assist the UN-led negotiations in Geneva for political solution in Syria based on Resolution 2254. He told opposition leaders that a strong, unified team would be a creative partner in Geneva, and he stressed the need for a team that can explore more than one way to arrive at the goals we need to reach. His remarks are available online. Yesterday afternoon, we issued the following statement attributable to the spokesman of the Secretary General on Nigeria. The Secretary General condemns the suicide attacks on the 21st of November in Adamawa State, Nigeria, which results, resulted in scores of casualties. The Secretary General extends his condolences to the bereaved families and to the government and people of Nigeria for the loss of life. He wishes a speedy recovery to the injured. He calls for those responsible for these heinous acts to be swiftly brought to justice. The Secretary General reiterates the solidarity of the United Nations with the government of Nigeria in its fight against terrorism and violent extremism. He also renews the commitment of the United States to continue support 
uh, to, to support regional counterterrorism initiatives. Following the high-level conference yesterday to address the urgent needs of Caribbean islands affected by hurricanes Irma and Maria, over $1.3 billion were mobilized in pledges and over $1 million in loans and debt relief. Nearly 400 high-level representatives from governments, multilateral, and civil society organizations in the private sector were gathered here with the Secretary General of the United Nations and the Caribbean community to help countries to build back better. The principal economic sectors of tourism and agriculture have been significantly affected, and recovery costs surpassed $5 billion, according to the latest needs estimates. In some cases, that impact is 3.5 times the country's gross domestic product, for example, in the British Virgin Islands. We have a press release with more information available in our office. The Special Representative of the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict, Virginia Gamba, wrapped up a two-day visit in Colombia, where she met government and civil society representatives, members of the Catholic Church, and UN partners. She said that the implementation of the child protection measures included in the Colombian peace agreement between the government and the farc -EP is encouraging and that lessons can be drawn from that process. Ms. Gamba added that the reintegration of former combatants, especially ex-child soldiers, should be everyone's priority, as it allows released children to become active members of their community while promoting a culture of peace. She also stressed that children used and abused in and for armed conflict should be treated as victims and that detention and juvenile courts should only be used as a last resort. More information is available in a press release issued by her office. And UNICEF today called on European authorities to pay greater attention to the needs of refugee children, many of whom are living in deep distress. The call came after the reported suicide of an 11-year-old Afghan boy in a refugee facility in Austria. In a statement, UNICEF said it is crucial that these children receive the right, the right quality of care at the right time to detect early warning signals of trouble, access to mental health services, and the support of guardians or foster families. If such measures are not put in place as a matter of urgency, the long-term impact on children's lives and their societies can be incalculable, the agency said. And I have an appointment to announce. The Secretary General today announced the appointment of Pernil Daler Kardel of Denmark as acting United Nations Special Coordinator for Lebanon. Ms. Kardel succeeds Sigrid Kag of the Netherlands, who concluded her assignment on the 26th of October. The Secretary General is thankful for Ms. Kag's dedication and leadership of the UN Special Coordinator's Office. Ms. Kardel brings 25 years of experience in diplomacy, political affairs, international cooperation, and economic development spanning several continents. Most recently, Ms. Cardell served as Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General for the UN Assistance Mission in Afghanistan since 2016. Uh, after I'm done, uh, we'll have Brendan Verma, the spokesperson for the President of the General Assembly. And as I pointed out, I'll also be joined after that by Pramila Patton, the UN Special Representative on Sexual Violence and Conflict. Also, this is the last briefing before the Thanksgiving holiday. The UN will be closed tomorrow, and we will not brief on Friday. The briefings will resume next Monday. Yes. Thanks, Farhan. Um, has the UN been formally informed by Saudi Arabia of their decision to reopen Hodeida Port and Sana'a Airport, and what's your response to that? And then I have a second question on Zimbabwe. Uh, yes, just within the past uh, hour or so, uh, we've received uh, uh, information from our Saudi counterparts indicating that they're willing to open up uh, uh, over the next day uh, the ports of Hudeda and Al Salif as well as the airport at Sana'a. Uh, we're monitoring these developments and we're trying to see uh, uh, whether that actually takes place on the ground. Of course, if that were to happen, uh, that would be a very welcome and critically important development. Uh, we've made clear uh, the tremendous uh, amount of needs on the ground. We're ready to help uh, if the ports are open, so we'll keep tracking this and, uh, and see where we go from there. And just a second, second question on Zimbabwe. Has the SG um, spoken with the former president, Mugabe, or the incoming president? Uh, no, he hasn't spoken with either. Uh, yes. No, I want to know first, uh, who communicated this uh, news to you? That's my first question. Uh, 
You said so some, our counterpart. Who's so, your co counterpart? Uh, some of the officials in the Saudi government uh, made these indications uh, to our uh, senior humanitarian and political op uh, officials. Uh, it's not the we're, permanent we're, we're, we're trying to follow up with them on this right now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, does the UN have any comment on the Syria meeting in Sochi between the Russian, Iranian, and Turkish leaders? Uh, no, uh, uh, there's nothing in particular to say. Our, our focus uh, remains on the meetings that will begin in Geneva on the 28th of November. We hope that uh, all of the other processes that are underway will help contribute uh, to a successful round of talks in Geneva. Uh, yes. Farhan, on the issue of children in armed conflicts, does the SG have any reaction to the exclusion on the American list of Iraq Myanmar and Afghanistan for the list of offenders in the use of child soldiers? Uh, well, the, the list uh, uh, of, uh, of, child, of countries that uh, employ child soldiers, as, as you know, we, we put that out uh, when, the, when the report came out. Uh, I, I believe the reasoning behind the, that list what, was clear. What I'm thinking more specifically is that in the United States, those three countries have not been listed on the uh, Child Soldiers Prevention Act yeah. by the State Department. Has the SG had a reaction to that? Well, had words with Mr. Tillerson about that? Uh, well, that's not uh, our list. That's a uh, United States list. We have our own list, and, uh, and you can see where, what our positioning is on that. Uh, yes, Oleg. Thank you, Farhan. Uh, on the border controversy between Venezuela and Guyana, thanks for the readout yesterday. Uh, According to this readout, the, this, both sides, they agreed to continue negotiations and discussions. Does this mean that this issue will not be transferred to the ICJ? As uh, I remember, Ban Ki-moon, the previous SG, promised to do if they do not reach an agreement within a year. Uh, at, at this stage, uh, uh, of course, it's a matter for the member states involved, whether they are going to bring their case before the International Court of Justice. Uh, so, so it would be for them to determine what, what their course of action is. Right now, we're working with the parties, uh, as, as we pointed out uh, from Mr. Nilander's efforts, and, and those efforts continue. Yes. Yes, and a follow-up. Uh, according to a statement which was put up by your office in December last year, there was uh, a point that, that the Secretary General himself will transfer the case to ICJ if the, both sides will not tell him not to do that. Did they? Did they? At, at this stage, that? there's nothing to to say about that process. the The process of working with the governments of of Guyana and Venezuela is continuing, and uh, we'll see where we go with that. Yes, please. Yes, you. Uh, do you and uh, thinking about situation in Ukraine now? Is it working? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about situation in Ukraine, Ukraine now, because yesterday was urgent meeting of uh, military uh, cabinet with President Poroshenko, and the issue is that uh, uh, Ukrainian borders was crossed by new Russian military uh, forces. Uh, in fact, uh, there is military convoy was crossing in the uh, area of Krasnodarsk region of Lugansk, and the video is opened uh, by journalists with this. Uh, a convoy, military convoy, and in Lugansk today is a lot of uh, unknown military. Uh, by officials of Ukraine, it is a statement of uh, that those military are was crossed by uh, from the Russia, from the Russia border side, and uh, now it's really high increasing of uh, military people in Donetsk region or Donetsk Lugansk region now. Do you and has any statement about that? Uh, we have no uh, uh, first-hand verification of these reports and, and, no, uh, and no other comment on that. Yes. Yes, Sir Farhan, thank you. Did the Saudis explain why the delay, I mean 24 hours since the demand from them was for prompt or immediate uh, opening of the... No, no, I mean within the next 24 hours. It, so it, 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 it be, may happen sooner than that. It could be. A, it, I have it, another it question. Uh, do you have any statement regarding the return of uh, Prime Minister Hariri to Beirut and uh, is uh, rescinding on his decision to resign from? Uh well, regarding the overall uh, political situation, uh, of, of for, from the Secretary General's perspective, it's important to preserve the unity and stability of Lebanon 
and to avoid any situation that could aggravate tensions in the wider region. So that, that's uh, our key principles as this uh, proceeds. Yeah. Sure. A follow-up on Yemen and something on China Energy Fund Committee. Uh, in Yemen, I just wanted to, there are people saying that there was a, another airstrike in this case involving the World Health Organization uh, aid convoy in the Selwa area of Taiz province. Are you aware? Is that, can you confirm that? Have you? Uh, no, we, we didn't receive any information of an attack on the World Health Organization, no. Okay. I wanted to ask you um, yesterday, I mean, I'd asked you yesterday about this indictment, which is pretty damning in the sense of, of talking about this uh, China Energy Fund Committee a uh, UN you know, partner, in a sense, uh, being a, a bribery conduit to former President of the General Assembly, Sam Kutesa. And I noticed that yesterday there was a, uh, uh, there was on the Secretary General's schedule a photo op with the winners of the UN Energy Award at 545 that got canceled. I wanted to know, is that the same uh, energy award that's funded by the China Energy Fund Committee? And if so, did the, sec did the Deputy Secretary General go forward and speak at their event at 1 p.m., as was on her schedule, was the money given out, and was it, is it, if it's their money, is it wise to be giving it out if, in fact, they've just been a, a large part of an indictment and the money perhaps should be, I don't know, returned, redirected? Can you answer that? Uh, well, regarding the, the, the grant, well, first of all, regarding the event, uh, yeah, no, there, there wasn't any photo op, and I don't believe that there were any remarks by, by either the Secretary General or the Deputy Secretary General. Uh, regarding um, this grant, uh, the complaint against uh, Dr. Uh, Patrick Ho as an individual is unrelated uh, to the, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs Energy Grant, which is managed according to UN financial regulations, subject to a rigorous and transparent se selection process. Since 2015, the grant has been, been well recognized, supporting sustainable development on the ground. As an ECOSOC accredited non-governmental organization, uh, the China Energy Fund Committee, CAEFC, has worked with the UN Secretariat, including DESA, on sustainable development issues, including through funding the UN DESA Energy Grant. The grant aims to recognize leadership and innovation in sustainable ener in energy. The United Nations manages the selection process and awards a grant of $1 million to fund the capacity building project in sustainable energy proposed by the winner. And I guess my follow-up would be is in the case of Eng Lap Seng, he was the one uh, uh, indicted. It was not Sun Kyan Ip Foundation, but the UN immediately returned the money. And what I'm wondering is, since Mr. Ho was the founder and chairman, and there are pictures of him with the previous head of DESA, he's the man. Are you sure, is, is there somehow a new UN policy on keeping the money of groups named in an indictment which wasn't the case during the Anglaf Sang Sun Kyanip Foundation. We'll, 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 we'll look at the information as it proceeds. This is, uh, this is the information from the Department of Economic and Social Affairs regarding uh, the grant. Like, like I said, they, they supervise uh, that uh, grant and, sub, and uh, place it through a rigorous and transparent selection process. Is it, no, I'm not, I'm not yeah. disputing how the winner is selected. That, I'm saying yeah. that if the money is in fact tainted or came from a bribery group, but I guess my question yeah. is, why was the photo op canceled? Can you say? Because it, we it was sent out that it was going to take place, then it was canceled, and the De Deputy Secretary General never canceled her, her uh, appearance. Sch schedules change at the UN all the time. That, 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 that's a regular event, and is probably happening to events today. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, a news item on the wires that says that France is calling for a Security Council meeting to discuss the situation of migrants in Libya. Can you confirm that? Uh, no, that's really a question for the president of the Security Council to confirm. Uh, but obviously, not, uh, if, if, there's a, if there's agreement among member states to have such a meeting, uh, then, then this, the council president will inform you accordingly. Yes. Sure. Two questions on, on, on uh, North Korea and then something on Western Sahara. In, in North Korea, obviously, there was this uh, uh, defector who, who crossed the border. He was shot at. There's talks of, of, of uh, you know, uh, things being taken out of his stomach. but. There are all these articles saying that the UN command says that this is a violation of the armistice. And I just wanted, if you can explain, because there's a lot of misunderstanding out there, what is the relationship between the UN command and the UN, and why is it called UN if it's not? I, I don't think we need to get into to, to the history of this. The people who uh, formed this body, the United Nations Command, which is not a United Nations body, it's not a United Nations peacekeeping mission, uh, did it in the 1950s on the basis of... Uh, of a secure, of Security Council resolutions at that time. Uh, it's it's uh, a, a U.S. commanded operation that is outside of the United Nations and has been since the 1950s. Okay, hey, hello, all right. I, 
I'm just, I wonder about whether it makes sense for the UN to sort of like, is there like a, a disclaimer we've, put out? When these... We've said this okay. over and over again over the past half century plus. And the other question has to do with the, 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 the DPRK uh, jo junior professional officer. My question is now that it's now that the U.S. has listed uh, uh, the DPRK as a state sponsor of terrorism, I wanted to know, one, if you can provide uh, any more information on 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 where the, G, the the DPRK JPO is working, and two, are there JPOs from other of the the handful of state sponsors of terrorism designated by the U.S. Uh, working in the UN, and if so, in what in what department? Well, that's really more a question for the United States. We don't follow up on what the United States designations are. We have our our own guidings and our own rulings uh, regarding the junior professional uh, officers. Uh, uh, we uh, have already provided, I think, information about uh, the uh, single uh, uh, person from the Democratic People's Republic and of Korea. just to confirm, it's in DPA's electoral unit, correct? Uh, that's what we've said, yes. Okay. All right. Brendan, come Western on Sarah, up. Can and I then ask you on Western Sahara? What? Western Sahara. Since it's on the Council's agenda, I'd like to ask you a question. What is the question? Okay, there's two questions. One, yesterday oh, you said... Uh, no, let, nope. This is not going to just be me and you doing questions. At some oh, well, point, we I'm, have a guest who's waiting. Okay. On, all right, then I, I asked now twice your, your, uh, um, the spokesman, Stefan Dujari, to confirm why a journalist from Western, from Western Sahara was twice denied entry into the building, access even as a non-resident correspondent. He committed both times to go and check whether this was under the policy of you have to be a, a, a member state of the General Assembly, but no answer has been given. Since it's happening today and the person is excluded, can you finally answer that question? Uh, we, we did check with the Department of uh, Public Information who informed us that the decision was taken in accordance with the guidelines.